Hi guys and welcome to Break Frontier Europe Units Analysis. Seeing Margaret's dungeon is our last Thursday is a good opportunity for me to show you guys how tough and bulky this unholy knight can be. First, let's start with his attack animation. A midi attack with a quite slow start, but at least the four hits are quite fast, with no delay, so it's still quite easy to spot all the hits. Too bad his hit count is only 4, which is really bad, especially for 6 stars. But at least he can generate a decent amount of battle crystals. Compared to Logan, I think this layer gets an extra edge over Magnus for a simple reason that he got 2 extra hits and can generate a bit more battle crystals, and his attack animation is still quite decent to spot. Magnus is still better to spot though. As for Kikri, she is still in her throne with her marvelous 10 hits and absolutely wonderful attack animation. With that, she excels in both spa and battle crystals production. Compared to Kikri, Magnus is still far behind this area. However, the only reason you should take Magnus in the party is because of his little skill. Indeed, it adds 50% boost to attack power of that type just like Kikri's little skill. And now, the interesting part. It has another extra effect which adds 10% of HP to that type. Now, you might think that 10% of HP might not be a lot, but if you bring two Magrits as leader, then the whole team get 20% more HP, and combine this with Medulla Gem, that boosts the team's survivability by quite a lot your unit will reach a whole new level of HP that you have never seen before. Indeed, my Kikri's Anima, who has 5870 base HP, is now more than 8k HP, and my Magra's Anima's HP is even more ridiculous with 9.3k HP. With his naturally high HP in defense, this little skill makes this unholy knight even tougher and bulkier than ever. This is the best little skill for a more dark team. So, if you are playing one, having Magrus 6 star as leader is a must. Now, let's take a look at his brave words. First, let's check its attack animation. It hits very fast and condensed attack which hits all enemies. A good hit count with a good attack animation is enough to spot. At level 10, it adds 190% of base attack. A strong brave burst, really useful in arena and mob cleaning. And it costs 28 battle crystal which is a bit less than other AoE brave bursts. However, this brave burst is still not as good as Kikiri's which has 2 more hits and the extra curse effect which is super useful in arena and can be quite helpful in PvE sometimes. Logan's brave burst on the other hand is not comparable since it is for a different purpose. In general, Magra's brave burst is more useful but against single boss, Logan's Brave Burst is undoubtedly the best there is with massive damage and low battle crystal cost and the unique drain ability. Next, let's take a look at the Super Brave Burst, a new skill that can be unlocked once your unit evolves into 6 stars. So, to awaken the Super Brave Burst, you will have to level up your unit's Brave Burst to level 10. Once it reaches level 10, you will automatically get the Super Brave Burst, just like what you can see in this video. It's a process that takes a lot of time and effort but it's worth it, trust me. As for Magra's Super Brave Burst, the animation has less visual effect than the Brave Burst animation, which is weird. I wonder if it's a bug. But anyway, the rest still works fine. His Super Brave Burst has 9 hits and the combo is quite fast and compact, just like his Brave Burst, which is a good thing. It needs a total of 48 crystals to fill both gauges, and the attack damage is much higher, 
it adds 400% of attack at level 10, which is more than twice the amount of damage added by the Brave Burst, with only 20 crystals for the second gauge instead of 28. So, instead of wasting on his Brave Burst, you should wait until both gauges are filled and launch his Super Brave Burst instead. And to add to that, his Super Brave Burst got an extra effect, which boosts the team's defense for 3 turns. At level 1, it only adds 20% defense, but at level 10, it adds 5%, which is more than Elmo's defense buff. Sure, it's not as good as Lalban's boost, but hey, at least, it deals a huge amount of damage and hits 9 hits, and it gives quite decent defense buff at the same time. Now, let's see how good a 40% defense buff is in an actual fight. I made a little test against Maxwell to see the difference in damage received before and after the buff. And actually, I'm quite surprised by the results I found. The damage is reduced by 30 to 40%, which is a really great reduction. I didn't expect to get such damage reduction when I did this test. Maybe it's because Maxwell is an old boss and doesn't have attack power high enough to undermine my team's defense, but the defense buff will definitely be useful in a long fight such as the upcoming battle against Carl. And by the way, a little tip to you is buff effectively. Since you have two Magres as leaders, try to have their super break burst ready for the boss. First turn, launch one of the Brave Bursts, then wait until the buff runs out, launch the second one. This way, you can have defense buff for 6 turns, and with 4 Kikris, your Magra should recover his Super Brave Burst by that time. So, if you use your Super Brave Burst wisely, you should be able to get a permanent defense buff while maintaining a good DPS. Now, it's time to unleash the Unholy Knight's maximum power. To do that, I will use a crit team with ore and attack potion as usual. On Maxwell, it is 84k for Break Burst level 10 and 101k for Super Break Burst only at level 1. Also, I forgot to change his sphere. I equip him with a Medulla Gem instead of an Angelic Foy. So normally, if I use a Magris Breaker with Angelic Foy, his Brave Burst damage should be 94k damage and 126k for Super Brave Burst at level 10, which is almost at Logan's insane Brave Burst damage level. That is pretty amazing considering that Magris is more of a tanky unit. His power doesn't end here, let's see how he can manage in Arena. Since Magris can generate a lot of battle crystals like Kikri, I suggest bringing him as leader only. Even 10% more HP is a lot in Arena, it's a matter of life and death. Indeed, before the arrival of the 6 star starters, I can easily kill 2 Saviour at the first turn. Now, killing 2 Saviour at the first turn is quite rare. You will need a good focus and a bit of luck to do that. And most of the time, I can only kill 1 Saviour. And now today, most matches are decided by Brave Burst. So, the first one to launch his Brave Burst wins. It is as simple as that and a match between two teams of Magnus and Kikri is even worse. You won't be able to kill even one of your opponent the first turn, and you might need at least two Brave Bursts to win seeing Kikri and Magnus HP is pretty thick now, especially if they are animal type with Medill Gem. So, if you are playing a more dark team in Arena, then you should definitely get Magnus as leader. So, with 3 matches you just saw, I finally cap in arena, and finally the number 1 for the first time. Hell yeah! Sorry guys, it's not really relevant to the analysis, but I just want to share this achievement with you guys. Anyway, let's go back to the analysis with his stats and type preference. As Lord, he has almost 5.9k HP, almost 1.5k attack, and 1.7k defense, 
but only 1k recovery. As you can see, he naturally has a very high HP in defense, but he lacks a lot of recovery. That's why I propose 3 different types ranking for this guy. First, for Rina, since recovery and defense are not really useful, the best side for him is Alma to take advantage of his naturally high HP and his little skill. This type will make him the toughest unit in Arena. He is usually the last man standing in my team. Breaker comes next, so he can hit harder. Lord is still okay, but Guardian and Oracle are not useful in Arena. As for other PvE contains, Oracle will be the best choice since he doesn't have a lot of recovery. And with the next update, there'll be an HP boost for Oracle type, so he won't lose that much HP. Breaker will once again be the second best type because his defense is high enough for him to sacrifice a bit of it, then it will be Lord, Anima, then Guardian. So if you can afford to have two Magras level max, then go for one Anima and one Oracle. Otherwise, you should go for Breaker or Lord, which are good in both Arena and Even Pets. though he is a 6 star unit. Compared to Kikri, his stats are still not as high as hers. But he's at Logan's level, which is good enough for the current contents anyway. Overall, if I have to compare these Unholy Knights to the Goth Idol and Logan, Magris doesn't have as good stats distribution and normal attack as those two. His breakfast is not special either, but his little skill, on the other hand, is much better and his super great burst is something Kikri and Logan don't have at the moment so he deserves his place as leader in a mono dark team. So to sum up this analysis, Magris is a nice dark unit with a naturally high HP and defense but he lacks a lot of recovery. His hit count is quite lame especially for 6 stars. But at least his Brave Burst is not bad at all. His Super Brave Burst is really useful seeing it can deal a lot of damage and buff at the same time. Too bad the defense buff is not as high as Delbin's, but at least it boosts the team's survivability quite significantly, not to mention the 10% HP boost of his little skill which makes the team even beefier. Definitely a great little skill for both PvE contents and Arena. And since he's a starter, he doesn't need a lot of XP to max. And what is great is that you can farm him from level 1 dungeon for only 15 energies. So make sure you have at least one with the type you want before the dungeon ends. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share the video if you like it. See you soon.